Welcome back to another episode of the Silver Bulletin Highlight Show presented by Lantern TV. I'm your sports director, Brian Nelson. And I'm the assistant sports director, Khalid Hashi. And with us, we have the sports editors, Andy Anders and Griffin Strom. Ohio State just lost uh, to Clemson in the Fiesta Bowl college football playoff semifinal. And Griffin, I'm going to go to you for a first question. Last drive of the game, Ohio State was driving. They were very close to scoring. And then Justin Fields passes miscue to Chris Olave. Clemson intercepts. Game's over. What is your take on the way the game ended and just the heartbreaking loss for Ohio State? Yeah, Brian, it all kind of set up pretty perfectly for a heroic Justin Fields finish here. He got the ball with less than two minutes to go. Um, he had uh, 75 yards um, to go. He needed a touchdown to win the game. They were down 6, 29, 23, um, and they were moving the ball. They were checking it down to uh, J.K. Dobbins out of the passing game. You know, Clemson was kind of hanging uh, back a bit uh, to not allow that big play. Um, and then from the 20-yard 20, the 20 line, uh, Fields was looking for Chris Olave, the guy who he's been hitting him for touchdowns all season long. That's his main target in the end zone, as we've seen all season long. Um, you know, Fields throws inside, Chris Olave breaks to the outside, and it ends up in the hands of Nolan uh, Turner, the safety for Clemson, and uh, that was all she wrote. One, another year where Ohio State is just one, one loss away from maybe hitting that next level, and once again, they're going home. In 80, um, in the second quarter, things kind of got out of hand um, after Ohio State jumped out to a 16 0 lead. Um, we had a couple missed cues. What did you make about the missed calls and, and just the play on the punt where it kind of changed momentum and momentum shifted clearly to come Yeah, Cliff, two big uh, controversial replays, I'll say. Um, you had a targeting added to Sean Wade uh, on review after a third down sack of Trevor Lawrence. Clemson would have punted the ball back to Ohio State, still down 16 and nothing. Instead, they go score a touchdown down 16 7. All the momentum was with Clemson. They make it 16 14 before the half. Uh, and then later, you have the overturn uh, catch and fumble. It was ruled catch and fumble, and then Ohio State scored a touchdown. Reverse to be ruled an incomplete pass. Uh, well, obviously, two huge momentum shifting plays in the game. Um, but really, you can't, all, you can't ever pin a loss on the officials. Um, it was a factor. It was two huge calls, but in the end, you have to come out and overcome. Two plays should never cost you a football game. Uh, and then the punt block was, self, was a self inflicted for Ohio State, right? right? Um, just Cam Brown and Olave didn't take a proper angle on their punt block. You know, you need to dive in front of the punter and not into it uh, when you're trying to block the punt. Didn't tip the ball, so roughing the punter is called, and now you give them a free first down when they're back in their own territory on fourth down. A lot of people were even mad that the Ohio State um, punt return team was even going after the, the, the punt because they thought that they could have had good field position had they just played it safe. What do you think about that? I, I don't agree with that. This, this team has won all year by being aggressive. You go after, you had them pinned deep, your offense had kind of been sputtering at that point in the game. You're down 21-16, I think. And like, it, I don't disagree with the call at all. I think playing aggressive and playing with a foot on the throat in the way that this team had won the entire season. A little more discipline. Yes, uh, a little more discipline on the punt block. And really, I think just... It was an ill-fated play because if, a, if it's just Cam Brown coming across or just Olave, I think they each took the right angle, but then they saw each other a little bit in the peripheral and kind of wanted to avoid contact with each other, and that drove them forward into the play. And kind of going off of that, going back to the beginning of the game, Ohio State came out red hot and were dominating the game for, say, 85% of the first half. Uh, they were leading 16-0, and J.K. Dobbins was just putting on a show. What is your take with how Ohio State came out so and was so red hot to kind of the momentum shift with the targeting call on Sean Wade and everything that happened after that? Yeah, Brian, the Buckeyes started out hot. I think uh, Justin Fields completed his first six passes, but then he couldn't complete um, that last one on third and goal to, I think it was Olave again, in the end zone. They came up with three, and that was kind of uh, something that ended up spelling doom for them in the end. Um, they had to settle for three field goals in the first half. They kept getting down to the red zone. They kept coming up with field goals. Their only touchdown was that uh, in the first half was that J.K. Dobbins 68-yard run almost untouched. At that point, it was like, okay, this game is on. The first big hit has been made, and what is Ohio State going to do with it? Then, you kind of saw um, Dobbins, um, he couldn't 
he couldn't haul in the, the one on the screen. I think it was uh, second and 16 after a false start for Ohio State. He would have had a touchdown probably. Um, instead, he bobbled it. He couldn't come up with it. Ohio State has to settle for another field goal. There was another one where Dobbins makes a, a diving catch into the end zone. That gets overturned um, to not be a touchdown anymore. They had to kick another field goal. And it, and it was a game that at that point it felt like it should have been 24 nothing, let's say. And instead, it was only 16. And that's why you know the momentum is going to flip in a big game like this at some point. And Ohio State made those first plays. But when the momentum did flip, two scores and suddenly Clemson was right back in the position to take control of the game and that's what you saw happen. And Andy, um, speaking of J.K. Dobbins, he started out the game and was really what powered his Ohio State team to go out to a big lead. Um, he also had a career day um, breaking the single season rushing record um, for, for Ohio State and also was the first Ohio State running back to take clips to 2000 mark. What do you make of his performance in, in early in the game and then kind of going out with injury but also bossing back and kind of helping Ohio State drive down the field? I think Dobbins really controlled the narrative of the offense in this game. Um, when they were having success early, he was busting huge runs. He had that 68-yard touchdown. He had another, what, 60-yarder there. Yep. Um, I think, what, he ended with 140 yards or something in the first quarter, then after that only had 34 yards. Um, but what, he had that ankle injury, and as Clemson was building momentum, and when Teague came in, it just wasn't, he was clearly not on Dobbins' level. We hadn't seen Teague have to come in at a big moment this season, and he just wasn't there yet, uh, wasn't ready for the stage at this point. And, and as Dobbins went, so did the offense. I think Field was clearly limited mobility-wise, otherwise maybe he some more designs to try and get that X-factor running game back into it. But Clemson didn't have to respect the run uh, until Dobbins came back into the game for them. Um, they really stacked the ball. They really stacked against the Ohio State's pass. And they couldn't get a solid drive sustained. Then Dobbins comes back in at the, at the end and starts making some big receiving plays. Starts, he had a, one more chunk run there, uh, had a 12-yard carry. But really, uh, just after that ankle twist, it, it, it balled down the entire Ohio State offense. It's still a very valiant effort to go through. He, he went to the locker room twice, did everything he could, get that ankle taped up right, do everything, like really laid all the line for his team. And he was teary-eyed for us after the game. And everyone was talking about it. It was a very valiant effort for Dobbins and the loss. Yeah, and then I also want to ask you about the receivers. Um, they actually played a really great game as a, as a unit today. Made a couple of great plays. And Brent Reynolds was very reliable with Justin Fields. Uh, but they also had a little bit of miscommunication a couple of times on big plays. Um, what do you make of their performance and, and the plays that could have been touched on by KJ Hills in the end zone where he dropped that pass? Just what do you make of their overall performance? Oh, yeah. Um, I, are you referring to the one where uh, KJ, like, the safety came over and hit him? Yeah, yeah. hit him. Oh, yeah, he kind of got shoved forward a little bit on that play. I wouldn't, it was so bang, bang, I can't say that that should have been pass interference. But just that, like, extra contact kind of moved him into position uh, where it hit his helmet. Um, other than that, though, with the Olave miscommunication, I mean, Olave had a great game otherwise. The receivers made some incredible catches that kept Ohio State alive and kept momentum. Garrett Wilson getting a hand down instead of a foot on the sideline early in the game. That was that was incredible. He had Austin Mack. He had a catch up the sideline where he pulled it over a defender. That was great. Um, there was there was a lot of very key catches from the receivers in this game that helped Ohio State stay alive. And really, I think, very underrated how well they performed in this game. And I think it will be overshadowed by it. just an unfortunate mistake for the Yeah, it's just very unfortunate. Absolutely. Well, that's all we have time for uh, today and for the rest of the season. Thank you very much for following uh, our journey covering Ohio State and for watching another episode of the Silver Bulletin Highlight Show.